Steve, they're asking me, they're asking you, I'm sure, who the hell is Puka Nakua? He's coming out of nowhere, leading the NFL in targets through two weeks by over 10. He is Matthew Stafford's guy right now, so let's get right into the tape. You played wide receiver as the aggressor, and this is what we're looking at. The Puka on the very bottom of the screen here. This is a yes. simple second and 10 route, nothing too special. Catches the ball five yards short of the sticks. Both of these uh, players right here to tackle him, but look who's laying the wood. You don't see this very often. No, you don't, and especially from a young guy. He understands what his down and this is. He understands what's going on. Tutu Atwell is going to be the splash player. Yep. He's not going to be the player that you can say he's going to catch eight or nine passes. Puka is. Puka goes in there. He comes underneath, but what he doesn't do is dance around. You'll see a lot of these players will take that, and they'll try to go towards the uh, towards the Seahawks uh logo he'll try to outrun everybody this is a young player who understands get catch the ball put bricks on the house not try to run around and try to hit a home run just go forward take what the offense gives you what the defense gives you and I don't necessarily think it's Matthew Stafford who has trust in him Matthew Stafford has notoriously been known for keying on one receiver yep and go it to him it was it was Calvin Roy Williams. Mm-hmm. No, it was Roy Williams. Oh first. yeah, that's right. And then it was Calvin that became Megatron. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it was Golden Tate. And then Marvin Jones. And now and Cooper Cup. And now Puka. Definitely for Puka Nakua right now, too. And this the second play was, I think, everything kind of merging together. Matthew Stafford, Puka, and then also Sean McVay setting this thing up. This is a third and eight. And this is my favorite play of all the Puka tape that I've watched. It's definitely man coverage here. And I wanted to start here. When you're a wide receiver and you're looking at this communication from the second there, you can see number 23 is trying to highlight to the top corner up there who's going to bounce out here. But by the time they even get over there, the ball is already snapped. So when you're a wide receiver, yes. you have like – trips you have this pre-snap motion like what are the advantages that you're getting as a wide receiver here even before like you're even at the top of your route first the motion is give an indicator of what kind of defense that they're playing so that's always important and a good offense coordinator wants to arm his quarterback with understanding you are confirming where to go with the ball before the snap Mm -hmm. not discovery that's always important Tutu Atwell who's a leverage guy he's your vertical threat you get him going, have those guys, put them in a bind, have them slide out. With this motion, condense that someone's going to be in trail or chase technique. Yep. Allow them to have miscommunication. Takes the angle, keeps it vertical. But what he does is he gives a little savvy veteran move. And the savvy veteran move has to do with he knows he lacks speed. Now think about this. Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay trust their system so much that's going to get them in trouble at times, but Mm -hmm. they trust their system so much that they already know Tutu Atwell is in motion. Higby is right here on the 30 Atwell is one, two, three, technically 3.7 yards behind, but yet Matthew Stafford still throws the ball to the corner and the corner is still has his eyes on Atwell, and Atwell thinks the ball is going to him. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and in that corner, he needs to get the hell out of there. So Tutu's got to get upfield. He's luckily Tutu's got the speed to get out of there. But like you said, with with Puka at the top of this route, he's not a speed guy, and like that's the difference between no. him and the other guys. He has to work for all the yards, and that's why he, I loved how much he finishes on some of these routes. Like you said, like look at all this hand fighting. Uh, Puka's getting on this corner right here just to fight for it. And then he's got the size. He's 6'2", 205. So he gets up there and high points this ball. And then on top of that, getting his toes in. Like, this is like a play you don't really see too often for some such a physical receiver getting up there, hand fighting, and getting this ball down. So this was like a lot of skill for a player that was relatively coming out of nowhere and a lot of trust from Matthew Stafford to get this ball in there. You, you've seen this play. This this is this offense. You see it with the San Francisco 49ers with with. Brock Purdy is they understand where the leverage of the defense is. And at times that gets them in trouble. That's where sometimes they blindly throw it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the cor- the receivers are supposed to be there, but they throw it anyway. And the cor- receiver falls and the corners there and there's a pick. Yep. That's what you see. And, and it's pretty, 
pretty darn good catch. All right, now this is another fantastic play. And I think this is something that I'm looking for when I'm watching these rookies and NFL prospects. A slant route against press man coverage right at the top of the screen here. What makes a good slant route? What's a good release? What are you looking for on a basic play like this one? Because Matthew Stafford can throw this ball to anyone. So once again, press man coverage everywhere. And he's looking right at Puka Nakua. So he's doing obviously something right up here. They condense. They go in motion. So with the motion, they're already saying that Atwell is not getting the football. Yep. And nobody knows it, but they're not getting the football. He goes up, sets the guy. Gets him outside, gets the outside leverage, then crosses his face. And when he crosses his face, you know, being physical, understanding. And let's be honest, they're playing man coverage, and Matthew Stafford is staring him down. Yep. In this type of offense with Sean McVay, there's only one wide receiver that's going to eat. The rest of the guys are sp- splash plays. They're number F, and that's the position he's playing, the F position. Yep. Cooper Cup. If that was Cooper Cup, they'd be throwing the Cooper Cup. I'm not really sure, right? You've asked on here, how do they fit? How does Cooper Cup fit if he comes back in week one? Is 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 poor Robert Woods? No, because Robert Woods is is Van Jefferson, the run through guy, decoy Leroy. He's not the guy that's uh wide receiver one. If Cooper Cup comes back, I, I don't think Poor is having as many targets. Because in this offense, only one receiver eats a lot, mm-hmm. and the second receiver eats a little. The the one difference right now, though, is Matthew Stafford, to me, is playing out of his mind. So I, I do wonder, and especially because the defense is bad for the Rams, they are shipping Cam Akers out. I think they're going to just pass the ball at will. So I'm hoping that Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay could have at least two guys be involved because Van Jefferson's not they involved. Haven't. Higby's not involved. I was they, hoping we can get like Robert Woods type of production once – uh, uh, Cooper Cup comes back from Puka Nakua. Uh, Robert Woods at one point was kind of like the wide receiver 12 in yards with Cooper Cup eating there as well. So I'm hoping that Matthew Stafford could just play as well as he's playing. And I hope that Puka can just win underneath. Cooper Cup's going to get the option routes, but I, I'm hoping that the physicality that uh, mm-hmm. Puka plays with uh, at least keeps him involved as like a wide receiver two or three in fantasy. It's not, they're not going to be parallel. I, I just don't see it happen. And you got two of the same guys. One's bigger, poor, not fast, and Cooper Cup, not fast. And also, he's not, you know, he's having his hamstring injury as well. So you're going to have the same person. Doesn't work. They got to have a speed guy and a slow guy. Yeah, I think they're going to have Cooper Cup play even more in the slot, which I'm curious about what they're going to do with Tutu because they have kind of been designing some of these shot plays out of the slot in motion. Um, I think that Van Jefferson's kind of just going to be in the same role that he's been in. It's not a lot of targets for Van Jefferson because he's not getting any of the fun routes that you're seeing from Puka underneath and the option routes that Cooper Cup has been eating in. So, yeah, at least right now the Rams have – four wide receivers that are deserving of playing time once Cooper Cup comes in. And that was a massive question mark for the Rams coming up uh, before the season started. So let's go to a couple more plays here. Um, here's another right. example um, from Puka Nakua. You'll see him Good on the route. bottom right here. Uh, it's another route underneath, and he just finds some space underneath. Was there anything that stood out to you with either this look, his release, or anything like that? So his release, he's, he he looks the guy in his eyes, right? He snaps the ball, looks at it, looks at him, goes up the field. So he makes the corner feel the speed that mm-hmm. the route is getting started. He takes off towards Fred Warner, and the corner doesn't see it. So he goes underneath that might makes the corner run the hump. Mm-hmm. And running the hump is usually a defender, like your your teammate is r- making you run the hump, except he makes the corner run the hump with his own teammate, yep. which is pretty smart, man, and savvy. So I like that. Yeah, I think it's a little he, bit of play design, He's a right? rookie, but he's running. Mm-hmm. He's a rookie, but he's running like an old savvy veteran. And the reason like why – He's been out there for years. The reason why Fred Warner is getting out of there, he's got eyes on the running back in the backfield who's, who's obviously going down to the flat. So that's the communication there. So this is like you said, I'm sure Sean McVay is like, this ball is most likely going to be going – to this underneath receiver, and this time it's Puka Nakua. Here's what he does. He has the running back going to the flat. You have Tyler Higby right here, slow release. Yep. So that slow release is the to slow down the rush. 
And then it's also given underneath. So if the underneath route is not available, you have the through runner, which is the tight end. And if he's not open, so that slows down the linebacker and it gives the outlet for the running back. So he doesn't have to go to that outlet down uh, down at the boundary. Yep, it's a great play design. So the next couple of plays here, nothing too crazy here, but I think this just goes to why he's seeing as much target volume as he's getting. This is just a little bit of zone coverage here, and Puka just being able to sit down the zone. And you saw, I saw this catch right here probably four or five times already through two games. Like nothing too crazy here, just being able sitting down, knowing when to do it. But also, like we said in the first play, like. Just physicality, man. Like he's turning these yards after the catch. It's not like the fancy yards after the catch where you're running past people, but he's finishing with three yards after the catch just because of his size. This is a two Cathy. So you have the middle linebacker going up the middle. But one thing that Pua does that we talked about in the earlier one is with Sky Moore and mm -hmm. Kadarius Tony. Remember those guys didn't sit in a hole? Yep. And when you kind of don't, when you don't throttle, when you throttle down and don't stay still, he stays still, so he what well, by him staying still flashes his hands. He's telling the quarterback, "I'm open right now." It's easy right man. now, and he delivers the football. Here, and here's another example of that same exact thing: throttling the end all the way down. Like, but, but by the time Matthew Stafford's releasing this, he's like basically completely stopped, and this is a wide open yes. look, finishing it again. So, like, it's it's not like crazy splashy. No, it's not. But I mean, like, he, he did he didn't invent the route. He did not invent the route. So we're not saying. 100%. The route. Yeah, 100%. But he's running the route the way it was drawn up on the paper. So I, I don't even care about the super strong. Mm -hmm. Here's what I care about. He runs the route. Watch how the ball is thrown. And he re he actually releases. So they're running this out. Keeps the, the wide receiver on the outside. Keeps the integrity. Runs through uh, the corner. Mm -hmm. Makes him opens up. He steps inside but the ball is thrown outside because he's actually supposed to run outside but he kind of makes a rookie mistake that's where you combine you've been in so many different offices sometimes you just kind of go out there and you just become yep. a football player mm -hmm. the ball is thrown outside he catches it with his hands and spins and goes up the field man that's pretty impressive the run after the catch that's impressive yeah. but making it right when you do the wrong thing Sometimes the best routes are ran the wrong way. Catch them off guard? Is that, that's what the DBs are expecting or what? You, sometimes you just, sometimes you just, you've been in, in enough rhythm. offenses yeah. and you forget and you're in that rhythm mm -hmm. and the ball is so, the ball looks like the size of a basketball mm -hmm. because you've been catching so many passes. Now you just, there's nothing they can really do to stop you. Yeah, I think this is somewhat of the same thing because. I think Puka is running this a little bit more inside than Stafford was expecting, but comes back to this ball and makes another uh, catch away from his body. So it's just because he's in the zone, bro. He's when in the zone. You get in the zone. Mm -hmm. When you get in the zone, it doesn't matter what the heck someone is doing, mm -hmm. bro. That's my football. Yep, that's right. Okay, so that's gonna do. I think that we're pretty encouraged for what Puka is gonna be doing until Cooper Cup comes back. Once that. Uh, once Cooper Cup obviously comes back to this offense, they're going to be competing for targets because fairly similar body size and where they're winning kind of underneath intermediate. Um, so they're going to be battling this thing out. Cooper Cup's a hell of a player. So I'm, I would be assuming if you have Cooper Cup in fantasy, Cooper Cup will be a wide receiver one. I hope that Matthew Stafford's playing so well that Puka Nakua could also be uh, in the mix for like a top 24 you, wide receiver, but uh, we're going to have to keep him alive first. You think you you th I don't know if Cooper comes back and he's number he's the one wide receiver. You think there's a chance Puka is number you, one? I understand. I love Cooper, and you know mm -hmm. how I feel about Cooper. Yep. But do you sit the hot hand for a guy who hasn't played in in six or seven weeks and who's not up to game shape? Mm -hmm. He's practice. He may be practicing. He may not be, but playing in the game. It's totally different from practicing in the game. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure the Rams could take that extra week or so to get Cooper Cup's hamstring as close to full uh, speed as they can. They're not in desperation mode because they're they're moving the ball. I mean, they they played the 49ers defense, one of the best in the entire league, and they were consistently moving the ball. So hopefully P Puka's emergence could help 
Cooper Cup take an extra week if need be. But the reports are he's got a chance to play week five. That's when he comes off the injury reserve. So uh, maybe we'll do another breakdown later on the season, see how those two guys are cooperating. For more breakdowns, though, go to Cut to It. Make sure to subscribe over there. Steve's doing breakdowns on all these players, not just the Rams, all these offenses, too. If you're still with us, uh, leave a subscribe down below as well. We'll be back every single week on Wednesdays. Who knows who's going to stick out to us? I'm hoping to do a little Ravens breakdown at some point, but we're going to let the tape come to us. Uh, We weren't expecting to do Puka Nakua tape uh, going into the season, but here we are. So, uh, Steve, thank you for for breaking us down, and uh, tell us what you got on Cut 2 this week. Oh, we just got breaking down. Who's my wide receiver one, surprisingly? Bijan Robinson. Beast. Beast. Yeah, there's a couple splashy plays. Josh and I are going to be breaking down uh, all the running back film on uh, tonight, actually, Tuesday night. Um, and man, Bijan, that cut and the explosion and that offense, Arthur Smith's ground game right now is nasty. So lots of fun stuff. Over hey, uh, mm-hmm. I, I said on my I said on my podcast and I say it here, man, don't don't be shocked if you see uh, Bijan Robinson sign autographed jersey pop up in mm-hmm. the studio pretty soon. OK, I like that. All right. Yep. Um, OK, so All we'll right. be back next week. Thank you, Steve. We'll get out of here. Later, guys. All right. Appreciate it.